Hi Covenant kids in Nome and Bethel and wherever you're watching this, it's a beautiful day. Are you having a hard time getting along with your brothers and sisters in this pandemic? Well, if you are, we decided to make you a puppet show. We wanted to remind you of the importance of forgiveness. Even puppets have to work at getting along sometimes. So thanks for joining us and we hope you enjoy. Once upon a time, in the town of Puppetville, there lived a boy named Sam and a boy named Joe. Sam and Joe are best friends. Boy, you're my best friend. You're my pal. One day, Sam's mother bought him a nifty, neat baseball cap. Sam, here's a nifty, neat baseball cap I bought for you today. Come here, I'll give it to you. Sam loves baseball caps. Wow, Mom, thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy. Joe also thought it was a nifty neat baseball cap. Sam, that sure is a real nifty neat baseball cap. I sure wish I had one 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 of them. Then Sam's mother called him. Sam! C coming! Joe, hey, Joe, before I go, will you watch uh, my nifty neat baseball cap? Sure! Joe couldn't stand it. He had to try on the nifty, neat baseball cap. Oh, I can't stand it. I've got to try it on. Oh, boy, I do look cool. As he strutted around, feeling how great he looked, he tripped. Uh, where's my nifty neat baseball cap? Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. When I was wearing it, I tripped and the cap fell into the sewer. What? You dumbbell! I'll never forever forgive you! Things didn't look good for Joe. He was really feeling bad that he'd lost a friend and a nifty neat baseball cap all in one day. But Sam wasn't feeling much better. Don't worry. Moms can help in situations like these. And here comes Sam's mom now. What's the matter, Sam? Joe, that's what. He lost my cap in the sewer, and I'll never forgive him. Not ever. Sam? Never! Oh, Sam, you must forgive Joe. Why? Because the Bible tells us in Matthew 6, 15, that we must forgive each other if we want to be forgiven by our Heavenly Father. You mean... I want God to forgive me of all the bad things I've done. I have to forgive Joe. Right. Besides, Joe is your best friend. Well, if you want him to stay your best friend, you better forgive him. But, but it's hard to forgive sometimes. I really feel mad. We don't follow Jesus' teaching because it's easy, but because it's right. Mm, what if I don't feel like it? These are the times we choose the right path to go. We go God's way, not ours. This is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Well, I know you're right. I do want to go God's way. I guess I'd better go find Joe. Good job, Sam. You'll never regret following the good path Jesus shows you. Now, all Sam has to do is find Joe. Joe! Oh, Joe! Oh, there you are. Joe. I forgive you for losing my neat, nifty baseball cap. Can you forgive me for getting so mad? Sure! Wow, do I feel a lot better about that. Me too. So, once again, in the town of Cityville, because of forgiveness, there are still two best friends named Sam and Joe. You're my best friend. Best buddy. The end. And now we'll hear from Miss Michelle and Olivia. We're going to read some scripture from the Bible from 1 John 5, verses 2 and 4. 
By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God to keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. And and keep his commandments. For whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that that has overcome the world, our faith. All right. We're also going to go into a word of prayer. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much for your many blessings. And thank you, Lord, for always being there for us. We know that you will always be there with us. Lord, we thank you that through you we we can love others and that we can always trust in you, Lord, that no matter what, that you are in control. We thank you, Lord, that through reading your word and having a relationship with you, that we can grow deeper roots with you. And Lord, I, I just pray that you'll help us to to draw closer to you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for always being there for us and for loving us. Lord, I pray that we will have faith in your plan for working things out. And Lord, we thank you that we can abide in you. Continue to be with us as we go throughout this week. We praise you, Lord, for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, welcome to my front porch for Children's Church today. In front of me, there's a six-foot snowdrift. But here against the house, the sun feels warm, and I brought out my petunias to show you. I love to see things growing, and I've been growing these in the house. Our, oh, Billy Bug! Hello! Hey, Duffrey, look at my petunias. Oh, they're so pretty. I know, I just love them. I love growing things. I've got lots of seeds growing in the house. I have a greenhouse, and pretty soon I'll be planting Whoa. things. Yeah. Is, it, is it green? Well, not exactly. It's oh. kind of brown and dead in there right now. In fact, oh. I'm going to take the kids out and show them. But Ooh. it will be green soon when things start growing. We're going to b- talk about growing in Christ today. What it really cool. means to be a Christian. So I'm going to take everyone to the greenhouse. Ooh. Good to see you guys. You too. Maybe tell the kids you said hi. Hi. I told you there was a big drift of snow on the other side of my porch. We are going to be talking today about growing in Christ, what it means to be a Christian, and then to grow as a Christian. And seeds and planting have a lot to do with that. There's nothing growing in the snow, but there's a lot of life in it. It's going to melt and give water and nutrients to the ground, and things will begin to grow. The first part of being a Christian is trusting in Jesus Christ. And maybe you don't know if you're a Christian. Well, let me tell you about the first step. John 1.12 says this, To all who did receive him, that's Jesus, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So in order to be a child of God or a Christian, someone who follows after Jesus Christ, we have to receive him. That means welcoming him into our heart and our mind and our life. And we have to believe in his name, who he is and what he said he came to do, which was to forgive our sins and to reconcile us to God, meaning taking us from being enemies and making us friends of God. So if you have received Jesus, if you have believed in his name, then you are a child of God. And we're going to learn more about what it is to be a Christian. Hey guys, welcome to my greenhouse. I've been shoveling snow so I can bring you back here. We're going to be studying in 1 John today about what it is to be a Christian. And this little greenhouse is going to help me teach my lesson. It's not very green. It's actually white. And it's surrounded by white snow. You see, a greenhouse is made out of a special fabric, uh, plastic stuff, that lets the light shine in. And that is what helps the plants to grow. The first chapter of 1 John talks to us about the light and darkness and what a Christian is. This is one of the first wonderful changes that happens in us when we become a child of God. Listen to this verse. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now verse 6 of chapter 1. If we say we have fellowship with God while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. That's pretty serious, isn't it? But if we walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with 
one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So if I covered my greenhouse with a great big black tarp, would the sun be able to shine on my plants and help them to grow? No, it wouldn't. And so one of the first wonderful things that happens in us as a Christian is we begin to turn away from things that are dark to us, things that are evil, and we begin to run to the light. Come on in my greenhouse with me. Yay, we're out of that crazy wind. And believe it or not, even though the snow is outside, because this greenhouse lets the light in, it's 60 degrees in here. That's pretty warm. Nothing is growing in here yet. It's just starting to defrost. Well, one thing is growing. Look at this. Weeds have already begun. This is moss. I'm going to have to come in here and get all of this out of here before I plant my good seeds. The first rule of being a follower of Christ is that we run from the darkness. No dark. The second is no weeds. Do you know what a weed is for a Christian? It's something that grows in their life and doesn't let the love of God be there. So, First John, we're going to go to chapter 2. Can you figure out what the weed is that shouldn't be growing in a Christian's life? Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there's no cause for stumbling. That's good. Whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he's going because darkness has blinded his eyes. It's hate. That's right. The child of God runs from hate because it's something that doesn't allow God's love to grow in them. So if you're a Christian, a child of God, you're not going to hate other people. You're not going to hate family members or even your enemies. Jesus told us to love our enemies. Hate is a weed that we can't have growing in our life if we're a child of God. So no darkness, no hate, no weeds. So now you've seen why I love this place so much, because pretty soon when I start planting things, it's going to be full of fresh smells and green spaces. And I like to come out and have my devotions in the morning or a cup of tea with a friend. I'm going to rip out these old plants from last year and I'm going to start planting new seeds in the soil. And that's the next key that we need to know as we follow Jesus. No dark, no weeds, no junk. Do you know what the junk is? It's loving the things that are in this world. Listen to 1 John chapter 2 verses verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because he goes on to say that the things that are in this world aren't going to last. We're supposed to be living for heaven. We don't want junk in our lives. Now, I have something in my hand. Candy wrappers. Kate and I have been eating them. A friend sent us some chocolate. Can you imagine that I would ever come into this greenhouse that I want to grow into a beautiful living space and start planting trash in the soil that wouldn't make any sense at all do i want trash in my dirt i know it's not going to grow chocolate no i don't when we live and love the things that are in this world more than we love god well that's kind of like planting trash in our hearts maybe it's tv and you just love to watch and you can't stop maybe it's actually junk food maybe anything that is more important to us than God and his kingdom, those things are junk. They're trash that we don't want in our lives. I'm going to be coming in this greenhouse in the next few days and starting to clean out all of this stuff that shouldn't be here. And that's kind of what we do as children of God. We don't let the dark in. We run to the light. We don't want weeds growing. We make room for God to grow his love in our hearts. We get rid of hate. And we don't want trash growing in our lives. Trash could be nasty words that you listen to other people say and then you say them. Trash could be wicked thoughts that you think about in your mind. It can be a lot of things. And because God loves us and walks with us, he helps us to know what is the trash that we shouldn't have in our life. So one of the next wonderful things that God does in our heart when we're his child is he plants faith. 
Faith is believing that God is doing something, even when maybe we can't see what's happening. You see, soon I'm going to have all the weeds and all the junk out of this dirt, and I'm going to start planting seeds. Look, I've got some flowers here. That's my favorite things to plant. All these bright colors are going to start coming up in my greenhouse. But when I first put them in, they're just little dark seeds. But I believe that as the light comes in and as they begin to grow, and if I keep the soil clear of trash and trouble, they're going to be beautiful. First John chapter three talks about faith and it's something, a wonderful thing that God does in the heart of his children. Listen to this. We are God's children and what we will be has not yet appeared. Now we have some special friends that just left Nome today. Hey, Thomas family, we love you guys and we're sad that you had to leave Nome. And this part of being a child of God is one I wanna say especially to you. It's having faith that God is doing something good even when you can't see it. Listen to this. We are God's children and what we will be has not yet appeared. That's like these little tiny dark seeds. They're not beautiful flowers yet, but listen. But we know that when he appears, that's Jesus, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope purifies himself. The Bible tells us that we have hope in Jesus, that we're going to be like him someday. Just like I have hope that when I plant these little seeds, even though they're dark and they don't make sense as a flower, I have hope that they are going to turn into something beautiful. Our friends are facing something really hard in their life and it doesn't make sense why they had to move and why all these things are happening to them. But when we're a child of God, we have hope and faith that he's doing a good work. And just like these little seeds, they're gonna sprout into something beautiful. I know that God is gonna take care of you, Thomas family. And he's gonna take care of all his kids during this coronavirus. He's doing his good work in us. So have faith. All right, buddy, I wanna share a verse with you, which is Philippians 1, 6. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That verse excites me. God is at work in all of our lives and he is growing you into the person he created you to be, much like seeds grow into plants. He has a plan and a purpose for your life and he will finish the work that he started in you. So we came back into the house because this little grow garden I have is the perfect illustration for the next wonderful thing that God does in us when we're his children. We just got this this spring and we've started growing different plants here in the house because it's been too cold outside for anything to grow. Inside here is the most amazing thing. We put in water and we put in special food for the plants and the roots grow down and they soak that up. You can see the roots. You ready for this? It's amazing. Look at that. These roots are what are feeding the beautiful plants that you see here on the top. We've been cutting off and putting in our salads and it's just wonderful to watch things grow. And to grow as a child of God, you have to have roots that are digging deep into God and his ways. And we do that usually by reading God's word, by praying, by worshiping, by being with other Christians. Listen to this in 1 John chapter 4. It says, God is love. And if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So we've come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. That means God lives in us. He soaks inside us. We're soaking in him. Just like these roots are soaking up the plant food we give them and soaking up the water we give them and it's making something beautiful on the top. So as a child of God, you need roots 
that go deep into God and his love and his word. This is the message God sent to us, the Bible, so that we can read about him and know his ways. And if you're a child of God, you want to spend time reading your Bible and learning about his ways. And as you pray and worship and you soak up God's love for you, well, it just shines out and you grow beautifully and then you have love to give to others. So we're back in the greenhouse for the last point, the thing that we need to have to know that we're children of God. Listen to 1 John 5, 2. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. So have love, that's the last important thing. And from that love comes obedience to God. We're, we obey the rules of the garden when we're his children. The rules of no darkness, no weeds, no trash, and then to have faith, to have deep roots, and to have love. Love results in obedience. When we love God, we obey the things he asks us to do. And this is how we can know that we're Christians, that we're following in God's ways. Listen to what the last part of 1 John 5 says. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You are a child of God. And this book is full of the things that we need to know to follow Jesus. So I'd encourage you, read First John, maybe this week. It's not very long, only five chapters. And look for the rules of the garden. No dark, no weeds, no junk. Have faith, have roots, have love. These are ways that we can know that we're following Jesus. I love you guys. I hope that you have a good week. Don't lose heart in the midst of this pandemic. Keep trusting God and following and growing in him. It's so beautiful when things start to grow and it won't be long until this greenhouse is doing that just like you are.